Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Audrey here, Zinemoth.com. Today, as you can see, a 4 video review. This time it's Hot Toys Avengers Infinity War 4. So the latest version and the much expected version, if you ask me. I mean, people saw, of course, the Gladiator 4 version before with the same haircut. But after a big hit, which Infinity War was as a movie, and the amazing final battle scene with Stormbreaker, people just got crazy about this version, so I totally understand this. So let's see how this uh, doesn't perform on the review table, so let's get straight into the video review on Thor Infinity War version. So the packaging fits perfectly into the line of the Avengers Infinity War figures. This is the MS-474. It's uh, the standard edition, there is no deluxe or exclusive version, but now let's have a look at the front cover, because this is amazing. Have you seen that? And again, so cool. So they actually applied a separate reflecting layer for recreating the lightning effects on his eyes and around him. I think it's also here down there. There's some reflective parts. So pretty sweet idea by Hotas. I could watch that all day long actually. I can't wait to apply the lightning effects to the figure itself. So let's get going here. Alright, first close-up of four out of the box. Pretty sweet, pretty nice first impression. And let's go first to the accessories. So before you got quite a lot of accessories and I wasn't aware of this, but you can basically recreate two movie looks. From the beginning with the sleeveless arms or with the final battle scene with the chainmailed arms and these naked arms are sculpted, painted and articulated pretty pretty nice so um, as you can see there are a lot of details going on for the hairs it has a bit of a dark shading going on where the hairs are applied and it looks just really natural even when articulated you don't see unsightly wrinkles or anything it's pretty good so let's see how this looks on the figure afterwards then you have many of these lining effects they're meant to replace the, the standard ones and have basically a translucent uh, build up so you can actually see then the LED shining through different hand scarves then a secondary shoulder plate for the sleeveless look some separate breast plates or replacement parts also for the sleeveless look then we got two eye patches pretty tiny I'm not sure yet which eye patch belongs to what scene but I will find that out probably this is the later one they're definitely tiny so and last but not least Stormbreaker a much discussed weapon in this movie and I think also it had some discussion about the recreation of Hot Toys because it's not totally movie accurate from what I also saw is that this wiring is not present in the movie but other than that it's nicely sculpted it has some cool details like this leaflet of Groot here um, it's all plastic though so I mean if that would have been die cast like for example the force hammer before it would have been great and there were some discussions about the sizing but let's check this afterwards and then of course with every infinity war figure you get this uh, hexagonal shaped base uh, with a tour of writing on it so let's move up to the amazing head sculpt of four on this release so the likeness to Chris Hemsworth is even better on this release than on the Gladiator 4 that's for sure I will show you a short comparison afterwards but let's first enjoy all the details without the comparison I mean the paint application and the sculpt is just over the top it oozes quality and you probably can recognize that the two eyes are different so I think this is the artificial one of course and that's his natural one this is painted blue and this is some kind of a brown I would say maybe let's zoom in a bit more so 
so that's probably the max that I can get you out of it from this lighting setup. And look at the scouring. I think this angle is the pretty best for my liking. And that's for me, Chris Hemsworth, all through. When we dim down the lights a bit, you will see it gets even better. It's a pretty amazing work by Hot Toys again. So on the two eye patches we have these two different styles and the one here on the left, the plain black one, is a rather a Scaldian styled eye patch, a bit in the line of like Odin was wearing during the first four movies. And this one was actually never seen in the Infinity War movie. It seems to be like a work in progress state or work in progress concept. But Hot Toys used it for the promo shots of four. So when we actually bought this figure, we only knew that we get one eye patch. And even in the Hot Toys or Sideshow description, it does not say that you get two eye patches. So this is the normal one, but was never seen in the movie. It has a bit of a misalignment for the magnet. So as you can see, you have to twiggle it a bit that it stays put. So that's not perfectly aligned, but with a bit of time you will you will get it into place. So that's one look and the official movie look is with the golden element. And this one stays perfect. So here, pretty, pretty nice. And yeah, so this one is not stated on the actual movie uh, figure description. You get two different eye patches. It just says one. So nice throw in by, by Hot Toys. And I definitely dig the one with the golden elements more than the other one. So time for a comparison with the Gladiator 4 head sculpt. So I think from the side view, the Infinity War sculpt is a tad better. And then of course you have a better sculpted hair because it's just one single piece. Uh, in terms of the front likeness, they're basically the same, I would say. Here in this comparison, you definitely see the different eye colors as well. So Gladiator 4 has blue eyes, where he has an artificial eye on the right side. Then of course he lacks the scarring, which has on the Infinity War version. And I think also the beard or facial hair is painted a bit differently. And the overall paint job on the Gladiator version is a bit more reddish on the red side. Um, just a bit more tanned, where the Infinity War version is more pale. And just a quick detail, the of course magnetic eye patch doesn't hold on the Gladiator figure. so. There's no chance to put this on, except if you use, for example, blue tech. So next up is a short presentation of the ultraviolet effect. So what I have here is like a magic pen. You know these for so basically a children's toy. You can write like a magic writing and then use the ultraviolet light to make it visible. So it's not that strong, but let's see how this goes. Um, how does apply the, like an ultraviolet reflective color onto the eyes so let's see yeah so you can see there's a bit of a hint of reflection if I switch down the lights even more so there we go it's not that obvious and I'm not sure if it's because of the ultraviolet light I'm using because it's not that strong so here quick proof that it only works on the Infinity War version on Gladiator 4 version it does not work so there's no special reflection and here we have the reflection on the Infinity War version. I mean it's an okay feature, it's no groundbreaking stuff, it's an okay throw in. Um, you definitely have to have some good UV lights. And overall I think I would have loved a solution where we have LEDs placed into the head sculpt or maybe another uh, switch out head sculpt with pure... Um, LED lit up eyes that would have been amazing especially in com combination with the other LEDs on the armor so next is the outfit what we have got here is the final battle look but without the lightning effects and first I have to be honest I was not a big fan of this 
closing but um, somehow kind of grew on me in the past few months um, normally for I'm used to have brighter colors but somehow this whole look was on the first look it was a bit boring but now with the different materials applied I really like it now on the figure for example you have these chainmail arms which have this nice shimmery look they really look met metallic even though they're a pvc or some flexible plastic and what you can see here is they have a ratchet inside so the arms will stay in place and you even can put them quite close to the body so it looks really natural also the elbows have a ratchet so these wrinkles look maybe a bit bad but that's a minor thing this way it looks perfect then on the middle section of course you've got the matte black breastplate or armor and then these nice obsidian stones i was also not really aware of these but they look magnificent cool idea and then of course you can replace them with the lighting effects and you got um, six of these so there are different sizes all right let's check out the cape so for the cape it's a pretty nice red that they used really classy and then we have some additional effects going on here on the sides it has a very fine lining going on all towards the bottom here and the same goes for the other side so it looks really cool on the inside we have another structure going on can see that it's a really high quality material that Hoda has used and applied here. Definitely fan of the tailoring. And for the leg area, he basically has like biker pants going on, so pretty leather like or plastic fake leather, not, not totally sure. Um, but they look nicely tailored, pretty tight fit as well you have still some kind of articulation and then some lower shin guards which are separate to the boots so the figure itself is not standing upright pretty well on its own it's just not a it definitely can stand on its own but it's no totally securely fit so you should uh, think about using the the stand here but then again you will run into issues with like that what you have with every caped figure um, but I think the best way to display this figure is definitely with the final battle pose in a flying stance. Alright, next up I will transform 4 into a sleeveless look. So first you can lift up the cape. It's attached with um, two sockets into the shoulder area. Then you basically can remove the arms. So that's how they are put in on the other side. You definitely have to use a bit of force and then you just put in the sleeveless arms like that. And next up is the alternative shoulder pad. And as a last piece, you have to remove or replace these breastplates here. So that's basically the look that you go for with the sleeveless outfit. And just here that you see, you can definitely bend these arms now. And the wrinkling and creasing looks quite natural to me. The whole muscle toning looks awesome. Look at these details here. There's a small seam going down in the middle section here but it's not that obvious it's really not obvious so let's see how this holds up over time right now probably one of the best um, muscle arms by by hot toys i have to say the material is, is just pretty sweet it means it's so soft and flexible but at the same time it has all these details then of course you can show him off together with Stormbreaker and this way you will see a bit 
more about the articulation and the possibility so it's everything there that you can imagine like this and if you look closely the waning actually um, gets clearly visible when the arm gets stretched so if I put now up the elbow you will see that the veins are popping out a bit more than in the relaxed position so it's pretty cool also you can um, rotate it inwards of course to have him basically showing off Stormbreaker in a more relaxed pose there's lots of possibility options here okay next up is the final battle look so with all the lightning effects attached and what you can see here is that I already removed this obsidian stone circular elements you just pull them by by using your fingernail basically it's not ideal but uh, I don't think you can scratch this because there's a little edge here that helps you to lift up the the whole piece and then you have these translucent lining effects and you just align them basically at the right spot and there are some kind of notches here and you just find the right fitting appropriate spot for every single of these so they just pop in like this then for both hands you have like a freestyle lining effect which is just pushed over the gauntlet area and basically it's used to somehow accentuate the, the hand effects as well so that's basically the look that we want to go for and now let's switch on the lights so the switch is located beneath the cape down there um, quite hidden inside the back area so let's switch this on cool so off again and on again so it's definitely bright really bright and looks quite epic I have to say now let's try how this looks together with Stormbreaker in a flying pose and of course in a dim down lighting environment all right and here we go this is the final battle pose where he basically collects all the energy and the guys it directly into Stormbreaker lifting off and then totally demolishes the enemies the enemy horde so this is an epic epic pose still not a big fan though of this flying pole because it just blocks a bit the draping of the cape but other than that that's probably the pose that you should go for now let's dim down the lights a bit so this way you see clearly the LED light up feature what I'm not a big fan of is um, the wrinkling or creasing of the arm here this looks not really natural enough and when we dim down the lights even more so ultimately the concept really works that Hotos imagined with this lighting effects imagine you have like a, a dark corner or a darker corner in your collection with a separate detail and the UV lighting setup you could do some cool stuff especially with a strobo effect going on so for example you have the UV lights just shining in a, in a certain frequency so of course I have to close this video with you with the last shot of the three sabers during the main battle scene. So on the left side we have Groot, Teenage Groot, Rocket on the right side and, and the new four in the center. An epic moment in the movie and so cool to have now the possibility to recreate the look with the three characters on your shelf. Okay guys. I'm definitely satisfied with this 4, I was not planning on getting it, but um, this Avengers craze is now really getting started and I could not just pass it up. The quality is really up there, it's adding another level on top of the Gladiator 4, that's for sure. And yeah, just don't miss him. Alright guys, thanks for watching, see you soon on the tube and bye bye guys.